So I, I don't see anyone in the Skype call. <laughs> so maybe we just use the approach that Miro has suggested, uh, that if, if anyone wants to ask a question, uh, first of all, they, they, because everything is streamed, they can watch the General Assembly. So you, maybe, uh, Miro, where are you? He left? Okay. <laughs> Where did he leave? <laughs> anyway, maybe someone else can take over. Um, so this is being streamed live, and uh, of course the EPS members, all the EPS members can watch this live, and they can comment on the, uh, I would say, at the EuroPython Plaza, because that's the Telegram group that we have for all the EPS members, uh, all the no, not, actually that's not true. It's not the EPS members, it's the, uh, all the members who work in the work groups of the EuroPython uh, organization. But I guess that's uh, all we can do at this point. The other option would be to just write to the members mailing list that we have and then communicate that way. So let's start with the, with the General Assembly. Okay, what we need is, so it's officially started now, it's 16.11 for the, for the minute taker that we have to vote uh, in, in a couple of minutes. So first, a, a very big welcome to the, all the new members. We have 236 members now, because this was before the, the board meeting. So yeah, give them a hand. Right, now we have some meeting business to do. We need to select a meeting chair person. That's the person who actually runs the meeting. We need a secretary and two checkers of the minutes that the secretary then generates. And we need then, once we have those in place, we need to start voting. So the first vote is to a motion establishing the timeliness of the invite. So let's, who wants to be a chairperson for this meeting? Yeah, Jakob. Then we need a secretary, so basically someone who takes the minutes. Um, this should be written down on a text document. And we need two checkers of those minutes. So the way it works is that the, the secretary takes all the notes and then the two checkers get to see all those notes. It's gonna be printed out. They have to sign it. And this goes into the society documents. So who wants to be the secretary? Someone who has a notebook maybe, can take some notes, print them out. Yeah, Miro? Ah, oh, you're back. Yeah. Who wants to be a checker of the minutes? Okay, Jakub and? What's, what's your, Alish? How do you pronounce it, Alish? Alish, good. Mm -hmm. So the, your first task will be, Miro, to take down the names of these people. I'll wait until you, I'll, I'll, I'll wait until you finish. And then Jakub can take over. Well, I have these slides here, right? So uh, basically, the the task, your task, is to then make sure that all the votes happen in the proper Perfect. way, that everything yeah. gets correctly counted. We also need to have a document where all the people present at this meeting sign. So we need a basic piece of paper and um, and a pen, and then have to pass that around.
Checkers, Jakob and Alish. Jakob Musko. And, and uh, the, have, you, have you recorded the opening time, the start time? 16.11. Exactly, good. Great, so the first motion is this one. Ah, oh, you can see it down there as well, that's good. Yes. Okay, so uh, when was this meeting announced? It was, it was announced, let me check. Tell you. So we announced the meeting on the on the blog and also on the mailing list of the EPS members. And we did that on the I think it says down here. We did that on June twenty sixth. And uh, the uh, requirements in the bylaws is? <laughs> <laughs> you should know, you wrote them. Um, well, let me check. I yes, but our two. members need to know. I think it's two weeks. Let me just check. Yeah, I believe so too. Yeah, bylaws. Fourteen days before they are to be held. Okay, so the, this meeting was announced on the 26th of June, and the requirement is 14 days before the meeting, and we are now at the 11th of July, I believe. Uh, so that's more than 14 days. Can we consider uh, this uh, meeting to be called in a timely manner? Anybody against? I've found that we... The meeting has been called in a timely manner. Then we move on to the next. Okay, let me just go back. So this we had. Right, so the next part is the annual report by the board. Uh, this is, we, we don't have to vote uh, on, on this part, so we're just gonna give a report on the timeline for Europrice in 2019, the Europrice in 2019 organization and what we're gonna do going forward. I'm going to try to speed these things up a bit. This is the official annual report for the Europrice Society from, this is from the accountant, right? Yeah, but that's the actual annual report that we're going to Okay, maybe you can pass this around and maybe yeah. people can have a look. <clears throat> um, Anders, please do send this to the mailing list yes, as well. Sir. Yes? So this is the timeline of uh, your price in 2019. So 2018, uh, July, we elected the new board. Uh, October until December, we ran the RFP for 2019. We had two rounds. We had lots of, um, lots of um, submissions, lots of bids for the first round. Then we selected three candidates for the second round. We asked a lot more questions. And then we, we selected uh, Basel. February until March, we... Uh, had to sort out getting the Swiss VAT registration, so we found um, an accountant in Switzerland, and the accountant then registered us for VAT. In March we had the VAT ID. This was much faster than the UK last year, where we basically got the VAT ID just a few weeks before the conference. Then February 2018, we kicked off the US Europython trademark registration. Uh, in January, we launched the preview site. In April, we launched the, the main website. In May, we started the ticket sales, the Finate, the CFT, talk voting and session list. So lots of things happened in May. In July, we then got the schedule published uh, a bit late. Actually, we were a bit too late this year for a couple of reasons uh, that had to do with delays on the venue side of things. They did not react fast enough to these things. And the uh, website refactoring was not fast enough and uh, we also had uh, issues with getting the basically the structure the the work groups uh, to start working and so things got delayed a bit next year we should be in a much much better position because the website then has been refactored and we can basically use it directly we can start putting in content a lot sooner 
we can uh, then also, once we have the selection for the, for the location, we can do the, the logos much sooner. Okay, I'm saying this now. Next year, you're going to hold me accountable for this, so I <laughs> better not continue. <laughs> because lots of things, of course, can happen f and, you know, for various reasons, and maybe things get delayed again. So who knows? Anyway, in July 8, we start Europython, and now July 11th, we have the General Assembly. So ticket sales development. Uh, as you've seen on one of the previous, on, on the slides in the previous talk, we have uh, around uh, 1,200 attendees at the conference. We sold, um, actually, the, the, the number of attendees is a bit difficult to, to determine because of the way that we, we count things in the, in the system. We actually just sell tickets, and of course, you know, tickets can be sold to multiple people. Uh, and uh, those people are not necessarily the, the people that actually then do attend the conference, and so it's not always easy to figure out uh, the exact attendee count that we have, whether all the persons are different or not. Uh, what usually happens is that training tickets get sold to people who also buy conference tickets. Uh, this year we introduced something new called a combined ticket. This was based on the feedback that we received last year uh, from the attendees because it, they were a bit confused that we separated out the trainings and the, com the conferences, uh, conference days, and so this year we have this ticket that basically is valid for both. So what did we do in terms of the organization? We removed a lot of inactive work group members. We have to do that every single year uh, because the, the registrations in the work groups, they usually turn out not to all be, be active. Uh, there was a large refactoring going on, which is uh, which is mainly which was mainly Arthur and Patrick and Jakub helping on that. So I think they deserve a big hand because it's now running on Python 3. It looks a lot better than before. Sorry. Francesco, I forgot you. Sorry about that. So. <laughs> No, 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 is that okay? No, 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 we want to put you there. No, 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 no. Francesco. How do you write Francesco? Is that with two C's? No, one C. And then? Okay, like this, one C. Like this, maybe? <laughs> no? I had a C there, but he a said C one C, the so. <laughs> Excellent. This is better, right? Good. So give them a big hand. Huh? <laughs> so it's all modern now. Uh, and I think this is a, it's, it's much better now because the, the, the website simply works better and, and it's uh, a lot of the... I think it's still not 100% complete, right? There's still more to do because it, it's this is a very layered kind of application. It grew over time, so lots of things got added here and there. But I think we're it's really much better than it was before. So thank you for that. Right, uh, these are the most active team members that we had. I already had this slide on the on the um, on the opening in the opening session. I, I hope I did not forget anyone in here. Um, if so, please speak up and I can add you, of course. Uh, then a few words about how the selection process works and how we manage that for the selection. So we do these RFPs directly with the venues, so it's not uh, as we did it before where we talked to local teams and, and had suggestions from them to, to um, you know, contact certain venues. We do it the other way around because we want to have better prices, more competitive prices. We want to have the venues compete against each other. 
We also found in these, the two times that we've ran this uh, now that the venues know how this works and they actually expect it. And they also see that you're a professional organization if you do something like this, so they take you more seriously. Um, so this is, is actually a very good way to get better prices and uh, get better results out of everything. So just to give you an example, the bid that Basel put in the first year compared to the bid they put in the last year it was significantly lower. So I don't remember the exact number, but it was around 100,000 uh, euros cheaper than, than in the first year. So this does make a difference. And it also serves us well because we get lots more information up front that we don't have to ask the, the vendors, or the, the conference venues in this case. But we do have to improve it a bit because it was last time it was still too much work because we had 30 candidates uh, that sent in bids and it's way too much to handle because you have to consolidate everything and then you have to put everything into spreadsheets and try to make some sense of it and then unify the data and so on. So this year we're gonna put even more work on the vendors on the conference, uh, on the conference uh, venues and, and ask them for more detailed bids, including more numbers. So this has worked well. Um, this is how we selected everything. Essentially, the selection was based on the venue quality, location reachability, prices, flexibility, and the caterers. Because the, the two big factors that we always have is the cost of the venue and the cost of the catering. What else is there to report uh, in domains? Nothing much new. We had already registered lots of EU domains for EuroPython uh, in the previous years. We made more use of europython.tv. We have not uh, made an attempt yet to get europython.org back, uh, but we can uh, at some point. It's low priority because we're not really using it. We have new logos. As every year, we, we got um, our designer to create a new logo for the, for the event. And this is often, or in the last few years, was always actually uh, based on, on local aspects that we had. So the, in, the, in the upper part you see here, this is from the Jean Tangley Museum that you have in Basel. The lower part is uh, from, well, it's fishes, so it's Rhine, right? So uh, nothing much to explain there. Um, the, the designer that we have, she's from, from the uh, Basque country. I don't know exactly where she lives. I think she lives in Bilbao, but maybe wrong, maybe, maybe San Sebastian. She does excellent work. Uh, trademarks, we started the US registration for trademark for the trademark. Unfortunately, the trademark office in the US decided that our request uh, is going to be rejected. We can basically, um, we, we, can, we can still, you know, challenge this, this rejection and this is probably also what we're going to do. The new board will then have to decide how that's going to be done. We're going to have to involve some lawyers to get this done. The reason why we, we wanted to register EuroPython in the US is because we actually had a trademark case in the US where a band was using the name and also some of the social account names uh, as EuroPython. And we found out by just looking on Twitter and then you know, suddenly seeing messages that had to do with a, with a hot rock band, not with EuroPython. So we want to protect against that. That's why we have this uh, US trademark registration going. In terms of organization, we have um, something nice to report. Also, most of the sponsors that were there last year also applied this year, which basically means that we have very good relations to the uh, sponsors and that the sponsorship team is actually is doing a, a lot of good work. So the sponsorship team is mostly Sylvia and, and Reiko. And I think uh, they deserve a big hand for that as well because they contribute a lot to, to the budget that we have. Yeah. Right, and as always, EPS is now ticketing all the attendees. Uh, this year we also had to invoice sponsors from Switzerland because of the Swiss requirements. Last year we did it from Sweden, which was much easier. Uh, this is also something that we have to consider when selecting a venue, whether we want these complications or not. Uh, something else we did is we gave out grants. So 
even though we have not really publicized this a lot, that we do give out grants, mostly because we, you know, we don't have that much money and we don't, uh, we always need to, of course, uh, look at what the grant request is all about, whether it's, it's something worthy or not and how much money we can spend. But we, we did spend 42,500 euros in the last uh, term, between July and, and July this year. Uh, so I think that's, that's a good start. We need to extend this some more. Of course, we always have to keep a bit of a buffer left. Uh, but as we have more money in the bank, we, we are going to look into spending more money. We don't want to go into a situation where we, we just keep lots of money in the bank uh, and, and then not use it for these things. So these are the funds that we gave out. Uh, as you can see, quite a few. There's one, one is special because it doesn't have anything to do with Europe, Pica and Namibia. What we did there is we did not actually gave the grants directly to the conference, but instead we funded travel costs of European uh, Pythonistas, developers who wanted to go to that conference and then speak there. So that was kind of like, let's say, a workaround a bit, yeah, to still give them something. Because, of course, as you know, I mean, Africa is right, uh, right across the, the Middle Sea, and so, I mean, really close neighbors, right? So we should do something good for them as well, in some way. And there are some more. We also, uh, of course, we, we give some free tickets to Europe, European um, conference organizers to come to the organizer lunch that we, we had today. We give our discounts to user groups. Those are not accounted into these, uh, these 42,000, so there's some extra there. Okay, Treasury report. Anders, you can report on that. Uh, actually, I think we should uh, take questions uh, about, uh, uh, about the activities first. Yes. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for this report. Uh, uh, is there anybody who has a question about the activities of the board? No. Can we then uh, uh, file this report and go on to the next, next part? Yeah. I find that we are ready to file the report and then we have uh, Anders uh, who gives his treasury report. Please. Okay, so um, just a quick overview right now. This is, we have quite a bit of cash in our accounts. Of course, it's going to disappear when we have to pay for this venue and the food and, and everything. But it looks like we'll make a profit this year also. Um, I don't really feel I should read all the numbers here. So, Is there anything interesting on the next slide or should I just leave it here? The next is the auditor report, okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. But I wanted to give you some of the, some of the numbers from the, from the uh, uh, results last year. Uh, the, in here, the profit is 160,000 euros, but that includes some profit from earlier conferences as well, so it's not just it's not just the conference last year, but also profit share from the previous conferences, some of the previous conferences that were held by local organizations. Um, but in total, we have, a, we have a profit in the account of, of 343,000 from, from all the years. Um, we had a turnover of 580,000 euros. And I think that's the, basically the interesting numbers from, from the report. Okay, any questions about the financial report? Miroslav? Yes. 
Only if you want to repeat those three numbers, uh, Profit uh, 60,000 contains also yeah. earlier conferences. Then it, there was something like 343,000. What was that? Yeah, that's the that's the total profit. That that's the remaining total profit over all the years. Okay. So it's from the from the previous years plus the 160,000 for for last year. So. And the last was 500. The the last the last year's profit was 160,000. 160,000 last year. Okay. Yeah, and the turnover was 580,000. Okay. Please go ahead. Yeah, give her a microphone. Give her a microphone. Since this is a non-profit organization, uh, what's the limit uh, of the profit uh, that uh, one can actually, you know, keep uh, rather than investing them now within um, the year? The, the, there is no numeric limit, but we have to use, I think it's 90% for our non-profit purposes. So we have to start giving money out. <laughs> but it's over okay. a five-year period. So the message is that uh, we have more money that is not profit, but we should rather spend uh, within the end of the year. The, uh, this, this profit that we have, we have to spend 90% of it yeah. for, for grants and stuff within five years. Oh, within five years. Yes. So the, these are the limits of Swedish law when it comes to being a non-profit organization. Uh, you are allowed to save up money for uh, specific purposes, and you're allowed to increase uh, the, the amount of money you have uh, in order to scale with your size of events and things like that. Uh, but if you aren't spending money and always building more and more and more, more money, then the, the authorities may say that you're no longer a profit a non-profit organization and you may have to uh, uh, pay taxes and things like that. A message from Stefan Wirtel. There is no limit for the profit of EPS. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, the uh, EuroPython uh, society is uh, an organization under Swedish law. Okay, uh, so uh, do we have any more questions about the uh, financial report? Can we then uh, uh, add the financial report to our files? I find that we're ready to do so, and then we move on to the auditor's report. And uh, will you present it? Well, Stefan is not here, so unfortunately, uh, but, but he's, he's on, on Telegram, or he has, he has an open communication channel with us in some way. I don't know how it works, but it, he is sort of like virtually here. Uh, he did the, the auditing for the, um, the accounts for 2018. He, he checked all the invoices. He found, as, as we did as well, of course, uh, that a couple of EP 2018 invoices had not been paid yet. I think the last one was actually paid on Monday. Okay, so that there's an update there. So the last one was actually paid. Uh, this year, this is something that we need to improve going forward. We need to start checking these invoices uh, a lot sooner. The way basically that we found out this year is uh, about a month before the conference, I checked the, the old uh, sponsorship management document and found that. Uh, quite a few actually, quite a few invoices actually had not been set to paid yet, and I was wondering whether that was just an oversight, you know, maybe from last year's uh, sponsorship management, or whether that was actually true. And then I asked, and Anders checked, and he found that it was actually true. And then we started getting the money from the from the sponsors. Took a while, some you know had some issues finding all the records and stuff, but it worked out, and um, we finally did get that money. And he also has some improvement uh, requests that he wrote into this auditor report. I forwarded the report to the EuroPython members mailing list so uh, all the members can read it. Uh, and I think we have to attach the, the PDF of that financial report as well and send that to the mailing list so that all the members can read it because oh, right now only the members here could read it. Right, so Stefan, is there anything that you want to add?
Okay, if, in case he, he responds, and thank you very much, Stefan, for doing the auditing. <laughs> Now, there is one crucial thing that I'm missing on this slide, and this is uh, that it is up to the auditor to recommend whether the society should exonerate the board or not. Uh, so, do we have such a recommendation in the auditing report? We, we have that in the email, but it's not, maybe not as directly as you would like it to be. Maybe, Stefan, you can just... He writes nothing to add. Uh, Stefan, can you just re... Uh, basically, uh, maybe... He's writing on Telegram here, so... Uh, maybe you can just confirm that you approve the accounting that we have done and that we have uh, basically done our job well in terms of the auditing. Okay, maybe you can do that later on. I'll get the message and then... Right. Let me just go to the auditor. So I, I'll talk a yeah. bit more about the slide that I just had and then maybe uh, Stefan can, can answer that one. So some things that we are still working on, of course, in terms of finances, we need to still finance, uh, finalize the numbers for EP 2017 with Python Italia. Uh, we have to basically check their accounting and compare that to what we have in our records and then come up with the proper numbers that we need to uh, then, that we need to then uh, turn into an invoice that we send to Python Italia so that Python Italia can then pay the remaining uh, money. So, Stefan wrote, sure, I approve the report and will confirm via an email to the mailing list to the members. Sorry, I have to switch between YouTube and Telegram on my iPhone. <laughs> it's Sorry, good. Good. Yes. It's just slow in answering. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, it says you're pending the, the payment from Python Italia. Of course, we have to send them the invoice first, right, before we can say it's actually pending. So this is not 100% correct. Um, for EP 2018, uh, we, the situation is much easier because we did not have a local organization involved. And essentially, the accountants have done this report for us, and it's, it's there in form of the report that Andrews has presented. So this is the next point. Well, uh, we actually need this information from Stefan right now if he uh, recommends exoneration of the board. That is a very, very important legal point. So if he can just r respond yes to that, then we can move on. Because this bit and the next vote are linked together and they are actually, from a legal standpoint, the most important decisions in this meeting. So the question is whether he recommends that uh, the society ex exonerates the board. Maybe we can do it this way. We move on to the next vote uh, and then we do this afterwards because we are running out of time. So, Okay, so uh, we will uh, uh, move on and return to the, this item later. Uh, so we have uh, uh, the election of a new board for the next year of uh, the EuroPython Society and we have a number of candidates. Sorry? 
So uh, something I wanted to say, of course, before we vote in a new board, I, I want to thank all the board members that were on this board and are stepping down. So there's Arthur, there's Alex Savio, who is not here, there's Daria, she's also not here. Um, and we have Mario Thiel, who was, even though he was on the board, he actually never participated in a single board meeting, so it's, I don't know whether we can call him a board member or not, but okay. officially he was a board member. Uh, those members are not uh, running for board again, but I still would like to thank them for running for board last year. So thank you very much. Okay, we have... Hello. Do you hear me? Okay. Uh, we have a, a response from our auditor now. So I would like to return to... We forgot Daria. Daria, you're not running again, right? Uh, Valeria, not Daria. Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry, yes. sorry, sorry. So one, another. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry yes. about that. Sorry about that. No. So I would like to return to to the uh, auditor's report now, please. Yes. Two slides back. Can we do that, please? Yes. It's uh, all right. Thank you. So uh, we have a response from the auditor where he says that he recommends that uh, uh, the, we exonerate the board. And uh, with that information, can we file the auditor's report? I find that we've fil filed the auditor's report. Then we move on to the vote to discharge and exonerate the board. Uh, the exonerating means that we are not uh, making any financial claims towards the uh, members of the board. Uh, so uh, we have a proposal to exonerate the board uh, and uh, if somebody wants to propose something else, then speak up now. Uh, Stefan cannot switch between uh, YouTube and uh, Telegram the whole time, so I will just ask him the questions on Telegram. And he writes now, for my... The question about the dishonorating, uh, exonerating of the board. For my part, there are minor issues, but I suggested some improvements. And should be okay for the next year. So. Okay, thank you. So, uh, then I ask you if you wish to exonerate the board. You have to speak up and say yes. 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 Anybody against? I found, find that you have decided to exonerate the board. And then we can move on to the election of the new board. Okay, so we've... Um, uh, right, we, we had a lot of people who, who were on the board who stepped down, and of course that created kind of a vacuum because, uh, you know, we... we the, the, the members who wanted to stay on the board were just four. Uh, I had asked Reiko to, to, to run as, as board member candidate, and, and she uh, gladly accepted. Uh, so we were then five, but five is still not really enough to run the conference. And uh, fortunately, we have three more candidates. Um, there's only one small issue with that, uh, because they basically, they are running for candidate today. <laughs> so <laughs> there is something in the, in the bylaws that says that you have to announce any, any motions that you want to vote on in the General Assembly at least five days before the, uh, for the, general, before the general Assembly. But because the bylaws are very specific on saying that it's about motions, I think it doesn't apply in this case. I think that's very true, yes. So uh, I would suggest that we do accept the candidacy, even though it's a bit late, maybe. Um, I would also like to ask all the new members to come up here and present themselves in maybe two, you know, two sentences, very short, because we don't have a lot of time. So the new candidates are Jakub Musko, Stefan Vertel, who you already know, who cannot present here, but you know, I mean, it's Stefan, right? Um, Angel. You as well, so, and, and Rachel, maybe you can say something about yourself as well. Just very short. Okay. Hello, 
Rachel Fudd. Thanks. <laughs> okay, next one, please. Um, hey, I'm Jakub. I've been helping out with the website in the last year, and I want to continue doing that and take on more responsibility where, where help is needed. Thank you. Thank you. Next one, please. Hi, I'm Angel. You probably saw me running around yesterday a lot. Uh, so I'm applying for board member to I don't know, help out more. Uh, hopefully uh, also the website, because that's my specialty. But uh, yeah, and anything else I can be. Okay, so okay. I, I, I skipped the other yeah. ones. So we can proceed, I think, to this one. Um, because we, well, actually, we, we need to vote on every single person on this list, just for completeness. We can't vote them as an, in as a group? No, we had some complaints in previous years that this doesn't work. OK. You think so? Or we could do it like this, we, we basically say, okay, who is against voting everyone in as a group? Sorry, I interrupt you. Stefan wrote, uh, everyone was pre has presented themselves, yeah. and uh, Stefan did it as well. Oh, okay. So I'll, good. Uh, just one thing, I don't want to have my name in the board just for my CV. I want to improve EuroPython and FERC for the Python community. Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay. Can, can we vote to vote them in as a block first, and then we vote on voting yes. them in? Yes, yes. Okay, Let see. me run the, that part of the meeting. Yes. That's not a problem for me. One yeah. Yes. So for Stefan, uh, you can't be both board member and auditor. So he has to can be a candidate for either the board or as auditor. I wrote him that he can be a board member and the auditor at the same time. He has to decide, and now he's writing. <laughs> typing. Still typing. It's a long yes. <laughs> okay. Board member, it's better I can help the community, but I will give some suggestion to my replacement. Okay. So I interpret that, uh, that he, as, uh, he is a candidate to be a board member. So uh, then... We have a, a procedure. I would like us to have a vote for the chairman of the board and then to have a vote where we vote in every other candidate as a member of the board at the same time. Now, uh, can we do that as a procedure? Yes. yes. Anybody against? I found that we, we're going to use that procedure. So then uh, I assume that it is Mark Andre who is the candidate for the chairmanship. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct, sure. Okay, can we elect uh, Mark Andre Lemberg as chairman of the EuroPython board? Anybody against? I find that we've elected him. And uh, then we have uh, the rest of the board. Uh, can we vote in all those uh, candidates that we had on the list? Yes. Anybody against? I find that we vote them in. Okay, then we need then, the vice um, chair. Ah, we need to, to select a vice chair of the board uh, as well. Uh, usually the board uh, does those selections by themselves. Does Do the... Uh, bylaws actually state that we have to do, make those elections? It's part of the bylaws, yes, we added that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. So, can we uh, select Sir Martin Christensen 
as chair, uh, vice chairman of the board? Yes. Anybody against? I find that we've uh, selected him <laughs> as uh, vice chairman. Next, please. And we have to speed up a bit, indeed. So we need yes. now we need the auditors, and we need the feedback from Stefan there. Uh, well, S Stefan has uh, already been elected to the board, so he... No, we need the feedback because he, he uh -huh. said that he had some suggestions. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Okay, he agreed on you as a chairman, and now he's still agreeing okay. on question. Uh -huh. Excellent. <laughs> who, who would like to volunteer as auditor for next year? It should be someone who's not on the board, Someone who is not afraid of handling yes. hundreds of invoices? So since uh, I've been auditor uh, in Swedish societies uh, several times and I have been the replacement auditor for the EuroPython Society, I will candidate as an auditor. Okay, then we need one replacement. So the replacement uh, comes in if I'm too ill or dead or something like that. <laughs> but, yeah, great. So uh, then we have two ca a candidate as uh, auditor, which is Jacob Hallen, and uh, uh, Francesco as re replacement. Uh, do we have any more candidates? Can we elect these two? Yes. Anybody against? I find that we've elected them. Uh, okay, then we can m move on. Uh, a nomination committee. Uh, do we have any candidates for a, a nomination con committee? Uh, as we've seen uh, this year, it's really good to have a nomination committee so that we can have uh, names proposed be way before the meeting. So does anybody feel qualified for this job? In, in the past, we always have basically uh, not voted on this, or we just said we don't need it, because essentially anyone can, can be a board member and, and uh, nominations can be entered by any EPS member. So by putting in a nomination committee, we would limit this, rather than actually... Uh, actu the actually, board. the answer is uh, uh, op the opposite. Uh, a nomination committee uh, has the job of encouraging people to to volunteer right but we have uh, basically yeah. avoided this uh, mm -hmm. in the past because we found it unnecessary to have just the committee select the people that can be nominated uh, well that's not really how it works anybody can be nominated even at the meeting uh, okay. but, uh, but in order to have a proposal ahead of the meeting, it is very useful to have an, an election committee. But since we don't have any candidates, I think it's very hard to vote uh, in an election committee. So uh, can we decide to leave this point? Yes. Yes. Okay, I find that we have decided to move on. Then we have a presentation of the budget. Are you or is Anders presenting it? Um, Anna, Anna's uh, wrote this, so maybe Anders presents it as well. Yeah. Okay, Anders, please go ahead. Yes. So um, basically, we we looked at uh, last year's actual numbers. We want to. So, uh, the main difference is that we want to increase the number of grants we gave. Um, otherwise, it's essentially the same budget as, as we had an outcome from, from last year. Um, the, we expect the, 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 the conference surplus budget is, is, like, budget is lower than what we expect to spend because we have a lot of built up profit from last year and we have to sp start spending some of that so um, we actually want to we actually want to be in the red for next year okay any questions about the budget 
then I wonder if uh, the meeting is uh, willing to approve the budget. Anybody against? Then I find the budget approved. Uh, then uh, we have uh, the question of membership fee in the European Society, and we have a proposal from the board to set it at uh, zero euro. Do we have any other proposals? Can we set it at zero euro? Yes. Yes. Anybody against? I found that we've set it at zero euro. And uh, next uh, item is propositions from the board, there aren't any, so we'll move on. And motions from the members, there aren't any, so we'll move on. And then we have uh, some sort of general discussion. Uh. <laughs> We're basically done. That's, uh, uh, we, we actually managed to finish almost on time. So do you have any questions? Any comments? I'm not going to wait on Stefan to answer this one. But. All right. Then thank you very much, and we can officially close the meeting at 17.02. Okay. I would like to finish the meeting by uh, giving a great thanks to the outgoing board, who's arranged what I think is a fabulous conference. So thank you very much, and by this I end the meeting. And a big applause to you.